Because I think it's intrinsically woven into our society to have a general reverence for the dead. I think that's very important. Um, and the only reason for that, to have reverence for the dead, in my personal opinion, is because that person has lived their life. And whether they took their own life or their life naturally came to a close, they are farther along than you are. So you need to have respect for them. That's, that's an earned respect. Your, their journey has ended, so yours hasn't. They are a step ahead of you, so therefore you need to have respect for them. I'll give you an example uh, in terms of like how I view it. I remember one time I went to the cemetery with some friends. I like going to the cemetery. I think it's a very calming environment. Some people don't. Um, now, I'm very particular uh, when going to the cemetery. I don't really, I'm not a huge fan of people, especially alternative people going to the cemetery and doing photo shoots there. Um, not really big on that. Hi, how are you? Thank you for the follow, Zach. Uh, I think it's kind of in poor taste. I get it. Yeah, it's fucking spooky and it's whatever. But I think it's in poor taste because you're, in my opinion, you're trivializing these people. This is, this is where they sleep. It's like if I came to where you slept in the middle of the fucking night and just started being like, mm, we out here, <laughs> that's disrespectful as fuck. Same concept. But I remember when I went to the cemetery with a friend, uh, I was, we were walking and it was a very cramped cemetery. There was very little space. You know, some cemeteries, they have very clear paths between the stones, right? This one didn't have clear paths between the stones and the stones were basically like neck and neck. There was a small little alleyways in between, uh, but there wasn't a clear, marked path um every time we would walk past them they turned around at one point and they're like are you saying something and i'm like yeah and they were like are you speaking to the dead bodies and i'm like yeah and they're like what are you saying and i was like i'm just saying excuse me and they're like when we walk by a grave and i'm like yeah and they're like why and i'm like it's polite i've always done that i don't know why no one ever taught me to do that and i that's that's my that's my, I guess, viewpoint of it is if it's just like if somebody that to me, they're not entirely dead. I view it the same way. As I said, if you were laying there on the ground and I'm walking by you, I would just politely be, excuse me. You know, I think that's a, a very healthy reverence to have. And I think that spans most cultures. Anybody who doesn't have that, I think is, is kind of probably a piece of shit. I think there, my belief if you want me to, I guess, I'll just explain. I I don't have a concrete belief on the afterlife. Um, but what I do believe is that the um, kind of kind of what you said, Zach, is feeling of energy. But I think that I guess the easiest way to describe it is when somebody shares memories and moments with you and is a big, big part of your life and they pass, um, I think that person becomes a part of you. And a lot of people, they're like, oh, well, you know, this is, they, they, they think I'm referring to the memory. No, what I, I, I implicitly mean that that person, a, a fraction of their self, becomes almost a semi-sentient part of you that will always travel with you. And it might, I can't, I can't really justify that belief. Yes, ex exactly. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Um, so I think that's part of it. That's my, that's my reasoning. And you're not required to prescribe to that way of thinking either. But I, I also have the belief that everything is universally connected. The human experience is universally connected. Life and death is universally connected. Everything is connected in some way, shape, or form. And I don't, um, I don't think it ever goes away. Uh, I mean, you can, you can look at an, another really good example. Um, Alan Watts, right? And you guys know I'm really big in Alan Watts. There's a really, really good quote from him. 
of saying like believing in reincarnation i think this is a really good way to put it and i'm paraphrasing here but basically he talks about you know a lot of people believe that reincarnation is like that you 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 fucking you pass away and then you're reincarnated into like a creature or a flower or a tree or something like that and he explains he's like for some people reincarnation is not that drastic because the person you were five minutes ago is not the person you are now you've been reincarnated numerous times your entire life you're just aware of it so what's to say what happens when you're unaware of it there's just another way to look at it so i think the energy continues on in some way shape or form but i think people like to look at things in terms of like reincarnation this drastic way of thinking like oh they have to turn into like a dog or another person or whatever and really they could just that that energy could be transferred or absorbed into another pe person that's why i believe the reason i believe the whole like a shard of that person that's really close with you stays with you and it's semi-sentient is because i also believe when you're in a relationship and you really have a lot of love for that person and that relationship dissipates you will never get that piece of your heart that you gave that person back it's always gone you gave it to them voluntarily so it's kind of the same concept that person shared their life with you and also gave you a piece of themselves metaphorical or emotional or mental but now you have it you get what i'm saying no agreed agreed uh in in terms of uh you know evidence based that's that that's how i am right um i'm i'm very evidence based but uh i'm not I'm not opposed to the thought that there are things I can't rightly explain, but I'm not, I'm, I'm very apprehensive to lean into something because I feel like that's how people dangerously get attached to like religion and stuff like that. But if that helps you, by all means, more power to you. I just don't think it's that simple. And I, I definitely don't think it's, it's the, if you look at, um, you know, uh, like the, the the just basic name, like God, Jesus. I don't think that's correct at all. I don't think any of them are correct at all. I, I think it's way more complicated because, um, yeah, no, that we're basically just talking about, I guess, the spirit in essence, Z. Um, it's... Uh, it's not it's not as definitive agreeing with you what you said see it's not as definitive as people think it doesn't just there is a, a pivotal moment when you know that they're gone animals or people they're they're not there anymore in that body but i i think for human beings it's very hard to wrestle with like okay so if they're not there where are they you know and the only two options we're usually presented with are oh they're in heaven now no i don't think so i don't think so i i'll also say this uh like dabbling in hallucinogens and this is gonna sound super fucking maybe like new age hippy dippy i don't really care i i think when you start to like delve into these layers where you start to really expose yourself to like seeing shit you've never experienced but it makes more sense to me indicates that there is shit that we are not able to comprehend or see that exists all the time in our world. So it is, it is light, but I don't think it's a bad thing. I, I think that's the hardest thing for people to, because death, to most human beings uh is is permanent it's um it's upsetting uh and we don't we don't like finality as human beings we don't like finality to especially somebody we care about we don't like that um it's very hard to wrestle with so yeah no agree dmt psilocybin uh to name a few um but yeah 
And that's not something for everybody. Kind of like with what you're saying, Z. Some people are very, very, uh, you know, put off by that concept. I don't think any everyone needs to do hallucinogens to have an appreciation for the fact that everything is connected and that there is shit that we don't see or perceive. Um, I think some people are able to do that naturally. Um, I mean, for me, uh, an example, like with, there's certain things like uh, with, with alcohol, with my uh, desire to drink less, um, I know what I needed to do. I knew what I wanted to do, but it was very, for some reason, it was very difficult for me to separate the uh, the process of just not drinking because of my association with it and the habitual nature that I had created around drinking in my own mind. But once I took like a ridiculous amount of psilocybin, that next week there was no fucking, I had no interest. Like even, even now with like, <clears throat> I poured that one glass <clears throat> excuse me and i poured a little bit more honestly i'm probably gonna have this this bottle tonight and then but i i keep doing that to myself where every now and again i'll drink like i used to and it's like a true test to see if i'll go back and every fucking time the next morning i'll wake up or we have people over a social situation you know when i normally would drink uh and i'll i'll like send that probe down in my mind i'd be like hey do you feel like and my mind's just like no nah. That's crazy to me. Just one time, because I took a bunch of fucking pineapples, I was like, no. How? How does that work? It repaired pathway? Like, we don't even fully understand that. How We don't even fully understand the human brain. We don't understand how certain aspects of the human body work, let alone why they work. So we don't fucking understand fucking anything. That's why I think also the medical community is, is stupid as fuck. Uh, yes. Uh, meth uh, not psilocybin has been proven Bay, uh, to do wonders for depression, OCD, addiction, alcoholism on down. There's actually a really, really good uh, documentary on Netflix. If you remind me, Vey, if you're interested on I'm I'm on the third out of four episodes. It's also based off a book this guy uh, wrote where he basically did all of the different hallucinogenics that he could get his hands on um, and uh, reported back his experiences and shared other experiences. There's this one dude's experience um, that uh yeah no remind send me a message on discord and remind me uh it's really really good um there was one it like literally made me tear up and i'm gonna tell you what it was this guy he had a super super hardcore um hold on i'll pull it up now so i can not forget um super hardcore ocd right and he like to the point where he's checking the stove Oh, it's called How to Change Your Mind on Netflix. There's, I believe, four episodes, and each one is uh, focused on a different substance. But the psilocybin one was was very, very interesting to me. And that's the one that like made me almost like cry. This fucking guy, super hardcore OCD, checking the stove multiple times. Is the door locked? Is it not locked? 20 times in a night. And he, he related to the point of almost somebody like holding a walkie talkie up to the side of his ear, just with like static constantly going off. And he said that he took basically what sounds like a God dose of psilocybin. And um, he basically did the sensory deprivation of, of, of the trip, like put headphones on and a blindfold and allowed it to take him where it needed to take him. And uh, basically, he ex described the experience, which I'm going to relate to you. I'm paraphrasing here. But basically, he had a friend that died when he was younger, uh, fell off a cliff. So while he starts going into the trip, he's falling. He's falling right next to the dude that fell off the cliff. And that guy hits the ground, and he keeps going. He keeps going, and he keeps going, and he keeps going. And it, uh, 
to the point that he's almost like a tiny little seed. And then that seed just explodes. And he, he sits there for a second and he's like, and I die. And the way he says that, that word, he means it. He, that's a full, like, on ego death. He, he died physically and felt what it was like to die. And then he's like, but then I grew into a six-foot sapling. And he's like, I got to experience what it was like being a tree in, in a fixed place and experiencing all the seasons change around me and me growing over time. And then he grows into this this semi-mature tree and then he sees from his perspective as a tree his family him included come past him his wife his son his dog and him and he reaches out his human person reaches out and breaks a, a, a twig off of him and is playing with his son with that twig and like just the entire story is wonderful to hear but for coming from him because obviously I didn't experience what he experienced. I can only relay it to you how I perceived it. But you can feel the weight of that. And the most important thing is after that journey, he's had zero fucking issues with OCD since. And they've done follow-ups. Nothing. So... That might be, that might be a good route for you, Vague. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really important that you're aware of it, obviously. But I think most people with OCD are aware they have OCD. There's, they're not under any illusions, you know. But yeah, see what you think of. I, I would definitely do your research. I don't, you know. Obviously, I'm not a fucking doctor. I personally, though, if I had my way, every fucking buddy would take hallucinogens at least one time in their life. And the reason for that is because I think it grants you perspective. You don't have to consistently do it. Although for me personally, I'm always on a journey to like self-betterment. I want to go, I want to go farther. I want to go deeper. Fuck me up. Fuck me up. Destroy my entire perception of existence so I can wake up and be like, why the fuck? And why do I want to do that? Because that way, when I talk to people and I interact with people, I can disseminate what I experienced in my own way because I know I'm good at oration and I'm good at talking to people in the regard of getting them to hear what I have to say. You can be good at speaking and no one will listen. But, you know, I can disseminate just different frames of, of, of being and different perceptions on life to people that might not want to, uh, you know, take those journeys. But I think everybody should, at least once, at least once. Because I do, what, what do you have to lose? You, you could potentially get better. A, a lot of people say, well, what if I had a bad trip? Well, stop fucking thinking like that and you won't. Don't don't go into it. And honestly, though, honestly, if you if you're if your biggest concern is having a bad trip, that's what you need to have happen. It will only give you what you need when you need it. That is my firm belief when it comes to hallucinogens. What happens is what needs to happen at that moment in time, because I've taken hallucinogens for years and years and years in different periods at different times in different environments and what i expected to happen um mush but i have i have dabbled in lsd as well jimmy and you're correct the location is paramount because i took i remember i took mushrooms uh at really in really bad situations like retro retrospectively horrible environment and I expected this full on like journey and blah, blah, blah. And no, I just tripped. I just tripped patterns, you know, <laughs> it was like a party. I've taken them at parties too. Don't do that. Don't do that. Set a really, like Jimmy said, have a really good calming, whatever is fucking, if you're going to take them for the first time, make sure you have a really good environment set up. Whatever you love, whatever makes you feel comfortable, do that. You can be by yourself. You can be with another person. Um in a ball <laughs> what do you mean i do I, I i think i told you guys last time i have i have this idea i, I don't think i mentioned it to svetka yet to get her opinion 
but I very much want to take a God dose by myself and do like a deprivation. And I want to record out loud as best I'm able. And then I want to incorporate that into a video and then do a post analysis where I explain what was actually happening to the best of my recollection. He thought you were going to die. That's, that's normal. That's normal. Just the biggest thing. What's up, Bishop? The biggest thing, Vey, is uh, when you when you decide to embark on those journeys, you really, really need to relinquish control. And I'm sure was, as somebody with OCD, it was very, very difficult to do. But you need to trust. It will it will not take you where you don't need to go. It will not hurt you. It will just show you what you need to see. It will expose you to what you need to be exposed to. It might dredge up shit that you haven't thought about in years and years and years and just hidden back in the back of your mind. But chances are that shit you've hidden away for years and years and years is is something that you needed to deal with. And it will only give you what you can handle. It will never give you more than you can't handle. Always general rule of thumb with any hallucinogen or any drug for that matter is... You can never take less, but you can always take more. So start out small, see how you feel. If you want to take more, fuck yeah. Then go on the journey, take some more later. No one's in a rush. No one's in a rush. And I can I can assure you, it'll probably almost never run out in terms of like your ability to get it. Although sometimes some people have, you know, when it's more the harder stuff to get. Um, uh, yeah, I used to be that way, Ray. I used to be very quiet. Um, because I would just disappear into my own mind. But knowing that I would want to be documenting it, I would try my best to do that. So I also will say uh, when it comes to psilocybin, the most profound effects that I've encountered happen far after the initial trip. When you're done, you've done peat, come up, come down, gone to sleep, weeks later, fucking weeks later and it won't be like an aha moment at least it's not for me it's like a gradual thing something will happen you'll have an interaction or you'll do something and it's not polar opposite to what you would have always done but your choices and your reactions are better in a good in a positive way and you'll be like i, I used to I, I would have done and you're pleased with it you know at least that that's been that's been my uh journey thus far so